as I was building all this and thinking about this, I'm like, man, even what we're doing with silica, right? Like for our monocots, so your corn, your small grains, wheat, whatever, we go with silica in the furrow or in the two by two because crops that are monocots have both the LSI one. What's and, a monocot? Uh, your your uh, the speed like the grass species, right? Yep. So you have di- dicots that has to do with the leaves. Two and, leaves when it first comes out there of you the go. ground. One leaf when it comes out. No. Cotyledon, yep. But if it's a monocot, monocotyledon, that's the first. So like a corn there plant, you know, when it comes spike. out of the ground, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a spike. spike. Yeah. Then like a soybean, when it comes out of the ground, it pulls and it opens up to two. Yeah, yeah, the that's two, a die. Like, this is my job. Yep. <laughs> this is my job. Yeah. This is my job. So, so but, but monocots have both an LSI1 and LSI2 gene. That's very important. Okay, so keep that in mind. Dicots only have LSI1. LSI1 mm. is the gene that allows silica to cross into the root, like the roots are able to grab a hold of it and take it up, okay? So there was a study published in 2021 that showed that soybeans will actually accumulate silica in their roots, gets into the roots, that's great. But LSI2 allows silica to cross the Casparian strip, get into the phloem, and then translocate through the plant. Okay. Because your dicots don't have LSI2, yep. you can't translocate silica from the roots to the shoots. So our pixie dust and our pixie dust two by two are set up to be root placed so that the monocots can take them up through the roots because that's the most efficient, most effective way. And then we get it into what effectively becomes the old growth. This is why we can make claims of like, um, we can help uh, strengthen cell walls and reduce lodging because we're actually silicifying, right? Or or building silica in between those cell walls Mm -hmm. uh, as that plant grows. And so the base of that plant becomes stronger. In dicots, like potatoes, soybeans, hemp, cannabis, whatever, and we can talk about cannabis later, right? So we, we can get to that later. We can get into later. Okay. Yeah. Um, now all of a sudden we spray it on through the leaves because it gets in through the leaves really readily, but it won't get in through the roots. So like that's why we do Pixie Dust Plus is our foliar spray for dicots. Pixie Dust, Pixie Dust Two by Two are the ones that go in through the roots. So well, it's crops. It's it's not necessarily crop specific, but at least monocot dicot specific. It's though. knowing what to put where. Yes. Well, and one thing revolutionary, yeah, right? Gosh. And, and the timing on the dicots. Yes. It's so important. It is. And maybe I mean go down that rabbit trail a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So so what's interesting is a lot of companies. Can now, you put a name to the dicot, monocot, whatever? Like a plant. Name a plant. Corn, Corn and beans. Thank you. Corn, yeah, mono, Corn. beans, dye. There you go. Okay, so say, so use it like that. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm literally like, <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> that's fair. In both instances, we want to get it into the plant early. So on corn, we go through the roots. It gets into the plant early. It's taken up through transpiration, right? So it comes up through the plant. And then it goes, well, it doesn't go out, but like it goes up and out and then deposits as the water comes out of the leaves. So you deposit it in the stalk or the stem of the plant and then also in the leaves. Okay, so that, that it strengthens those all along the way. But when you do it in the roots like that, it happens very early in the plant's life cycle. So as that plant ages, that silica, because it does not translocate, tends to stay concentrated in effectively what's the old growth. So then in soybeans or potatoes, we got to get it on early as a foliar spray because we want to do the same thing. There's a lot of companies that are releasing like PGRs right now. They're like, oh, we cost lateral branching in soybeans. Isn't that cool? Well, sure, it's cool, except here's the problem. Can't you do that with lower populations? Well, you, of course you do that with lower populations. But <laughs> but I will say, but but you can do it in a more pronounced way with some of those PGRs yeah. and even with non-PGRs. Yeah. You, can, you can absolutely see it too. Uh, we can get into the whole conversation about how all nutrients are PGRs if you want to have that at some point too. Because that, Amen. if the, if the EPA ever figures that out, that'll be a, that'll be an absolute shit show. Um, <laughs> but we can have that conversation a little bit, okay? So all nutrients are PGRs. Anyway, so uh, we got to get it on the plant early because right, we cause this lateral branching, or you see this lateral branching. But what happens is two two extremes, and either one is a problem. In a good year, we load that baby up with pods. We put all that weight on those on those lateral branches. And then it gets really full, and then they break off, right? Because you've got so much weight on there, and that soybean is not ready to do that. Or on the flip side, in a crap year, you've just spent all this energy, all this plant's energy, into putting on uh, nodes and then pods that then it aborts because it's like, holy crap, I don't know what to do. I can't survive in this dry, hot weather. And then it aborts them anyway. Well, the problem is nobody's putting silica with it. When you put <laughs> silica and you cause lateral and you have lateral branching, whether from a PGR or from something like pixie dust or from lower populations or all of the above, I'll get there in one second, I promise. But now when we get that silica on there and it solidifies or again strengthens those cell walls, we're gonna see less breaking of those laterals. And the cool part about silica is now, if it does get hot and dry and tries to pull back, we can help by or closing those stomata to where you don't have to worry about it. Awesome. Translated to farmer talk, that's adding um, um, Oh my gosh, the word just went out of my head. It's it's um, it's adding fiberglass to concrete. Does that make it stronger? 
Bob. Yeah. yeah. Then yes. Yeah. Oh, it's stronger. Yes. Or well, rebar. Yeah. Yeah. Re- yes. Same thing. Well, and one thing too, you know, we're talking about silica, and that's that's one of those nutrients that's not talked about very much yeah. either. So just ask. to help the listeners too when we're talking about silica it's an element it is that, that we're applying on it is but so th- people will say but it's the second most abundant hey, element in the, in the surface like wh- <laughs> why do we need to apply it because guys it's in a form that's not available right like if if the form that, there's a difference between available and recover or sorry i shouldn't have said it's not available it is available it's not recoverable the difference between available and recoverable is like if you're ever driving down the road and i hope this never happens on your farm but you see a neighbor who had their combine burned up right mm-hmm. that's plant available iron it's iron that is available to the plant, but it's not in a form that is recoverable by the plant. Yep. And that's what happens with silica. So we get a whole bunch of the silica out there, but the only form of silica that plants can actually take up is ortho or mono, either way, monosilicic acid or orthosilicic acid. So we've got to deliver it to the plant in a form that it can actually take it up. And it, it, that weathering process takes a long time. And it's an anion. It's like yep. nitrate or sulfate, right? So it's going to flush through the soil profile. So even when you get it, it's use it or lose it. And this is why nobody, I mean, if you're not putting it on, you're going to be silica deficient. Yep. What's cool, though, is that when you look at the research, why it's not a, an essential element, that research was done in either it was in 1936 or 1937. And it was all lab uh, research the way that they did this. And basically, they would grow a plant in a pot, and they would withhold a single element. And if the plant could complete its life cycle in the absence of that element, they would say, well, this is not plant essential because the plant can complete its life cycle. If it would die partway through, they'd say, oh, man, can't complete its life cycle. That's, that's absolutely essential. And there were like three other criteria it had to meet, too. But that's the big one, the yeah, most important yeah. one. Because a plant can complete its life cycle in the complete absence of silica. But the part that they don't tell you is there is a massive and marked difference in terms of the yield potential when it has silica versus when it doesn't. Yep. Why don't they tell us? Tell you what? What you, that? Would you say silica's um, <laughs> harder to play with per se? Like oh yeah, mixing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean that's part of the reason why is that why it's, it's not, not pushed? Easy. No, it depends on the crop. So like that's that's the okay, other thing. Right? So like like down in Florida and in Louisiana, they're using like a silica slag on on a rice because rice has had like the the highest silica need of like any crop out there. In fact. There's some conversation and talk that they're going to start even addressing like crop specific essential elements because silica is so Thank essential you. in rice and Thank in sugar you. cane, yeah, that you actually have to have it in those crops or like you just won't produce. So in those crops and down south, there is talk about that. Why haven't we done it in the Midwest? Probably because nobody's been able to make a whole bunch of money on it. That's typically why things don't happen, Thank right? You. Follow the you money. You just answered my Follow question. Follow the money. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the money. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat- podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content 